But anyways, moving on to a different kind of racing. The women's Tour de France has started. Yeah, we know Annemiek van Vleuten is kind of the goat of cycling right now. Demi Volring as well. But who are kind of the favorites to win the race? As Patrick said as well, the stream, the... They're finishing up the Tourmalet, which is quite interesting. I mean, you got AVV and Volring. They are pretty much just like the two big favourites in the same way that Pogaccia and Jonas are the two favourites. I mean, you got, I don't know, then you'd probably say like Longo Borghini is likely third favourite. But then you've got, that's the, the beauty of women's racing is that you've got a lot of riders who are very close together, like a, uh, a La Bousse or a Utrecht Ludwig or a Nivea Doma, Mormon Passio. They're all very similarly leveled, and it depends on like tactical decisions, really, who takes it. Yeah, I must admit, I haven't watched today's stage odds because it was a sprint day. It wasn't right. a sprint day in the end. Lotta Capet, no one chased. She won by about 40 seconds. SD Works, by the way, are going to toy with the race, I feel. They've been doing it throughout this whole season. The thing is, I, f- I feel bad because isn't this going to be Van Vleuten's last Grand Tour, and yeah. she's won so many in a row at the moment. She's world champion, like, and it's the Tour de France. Like, it would make sense for her to win, and you got that very nice narrative. But I just feel like Demi Vollering and SD Works is like they've got so much momentum on their hands. I think SD Works as a team is much stronger than Movistar as a team. Yeah, that would be think... a really cool ending. But then it ends in a TT, and I just feel like Van Vleuten is gonna like roll the TT. And is it Poe? I believe it ends in. Yeah, the thing is, Vollering and Van Vleuten have gone head to head at the women's like Vuelta which was mm. held earlier this year super close and that was actually lo- that was very easy. Demi Volling could have won that but I swear I can't remember but some kind of tactical blunder was made on some day which would have very easily swayed it into Volling's favour and let's face it Volling is just like, on a different level this year the fact that she won all three of the Ardennes which I know isn't particularly telling considering that you know Liège, Baston Liège, the Tourmalet. It's you know, it's it's a different thing, but I do think that it's going to be a close battle. I think it's going to be really entertaining. And like you say, SD Works. I mean, how many of the SD Works riders are going to get a stage win? I mean, it could be like five. Yeah, I mean, Weber's in the sprints, and he got Royster and like some like rogue breakaway. Kapeki's already got her stage win. Now that she can climb really well, yeah, it'll be. It'll be really interesting to see how it goes, but uh, outside of those two like super teams, I don't really know who else is going to touch them. Maybe maybe someone from Lidl Track, like a longer Borghini, could finish in third place. It's a bit like the men's Tour de France, but like that third place seems to be quite an interesting battle. I really like Labou to get it because like France and stuff, and yeah. BSM had a really terrible men's Tour de France, and they've been like hyping up their chances in the women's tour. So I think Labou's did lose like I don't know time today though do we want to talk about how because we were talking about this on stream scott about the exactly. timing of it we've spoken about the giro rosa as well how stupid that placement is that it is and it's like during the tour, men's tour de france so it's like not just the biggest cycling race in the world it's like one of the world events um on the calendar and then they put the giro rosa there as well because the female tour de france existed before this new iteration of it so yeah how would you improve it would you put it like we spoke about like Liège, Bastien Liège or La Flèche Valone they have it on the same day and then you could do something where you start the women's race 100 kilometers down the road and then the public won't just see like the one men's race they will see two races you and I were bitching about the the stupid e-bike race that we kept seeing in in the giro like wouldn't it be better to see the the giro rosa and then you have like you follow that every day as well when it's a boring stage or whatever so it's kind of like uh, yeah obviously there's logistics here but like everything starts with an idea yeah because the Tour de France fam is seven, eight stages. If you basically just start with Tour de France fam so that, that it finishes at the same time as the men's race. I'm not sure if it would follow the same parkours or a different parkours or whatever, but essentially have it so that the Tour de France fam also happens at the same time as the men's race. Because we were saying how you get to the end of a Tour de France, three weeks of racing, even for diehard fans like us, you get to the end of three weeks and you're a bit like three weeks of watching bike racing, man. I could actually probably do with a week not watching bike racing. The Tour de France fam is now just adding another week on. It's like a 
full-on month of racing every single day. And I just kind of can't be asked watching racing for like a whole month. Like three weeks is enough. And I just kind of feel like I would watch it more if a women's race was coincided with the men's. Well, I like how they have the how they have the weeks themselves though. Otherwise they're like in the shadows of the men a little bit. Yeah, that is also a good point. I mean, the parkour as well, yeah, that, that makes sense logistically, but at the same time, the like the Tour de France fam, they're trying to carve out this new identity. They've got really interesting uh, features in the race. Like last year's race, you had that brilliant, sort of the gravel stage of last year's race, which had never really been seen in a men's Tour de France before. We had it at the Giro a couple of years back in Montalcino, but at the men's Tour de France, we haven't seen a gravel stage, and the women had that through wine country in, in Champagne. It was like a really, really interesting stage where Marlon Royce won, and the the, the dynamic of having the gravel there, you think, oh, wow, but that was cool. Cynically, they'll probably try to do that in the men's race in, the, in a few years' time, but that gave the women's race a little bit of a, of a unique edge. Also, the fact that they went through the Vosges last year as well and really utilized that mountain range, whilst the men's race doesn't really touch into the Vosges that much. And, and the men's race did it this year, but by really delving into the Vosges. It's almost like an experiment for the men's race, but the women's race as well gets its own limelight, its own chance to shine, really. Also, maybe just different cities bid for it as well in terms of making money. Clermont from they, they bid for the Tour de France this year for the men's one, but they get the big women's Grande Par, and the race is going through towns and cities that will definitely give them the race money just so that the race is more profitable. you got to think yeah. about it that way. It, it, it is a corporate machine. Especially, yeah. Uh, I do kind of forget about part, because especially when you think like next year, the very extravagant location of like basically like Tuscany is hosting like the Grande Partenza you know it's in Italy but the women's race doesn't get that does it? The women's race is going to the Netherlands next year for the for the Grande Par. Oh is it? Yeah because I was going to say they don't get quite the same kind of raz pizzazz start as the men's race does sometimes with the kind of Grande Pars so yeah that's sometimes because it kind of feels like theirs just solely happens in France but like you say, it is a corporate machine and, you know, there is money but involved in this. It's not all just kind of like fairy tale land where it's like, oh, it would be nice if we could do this and that. There are logistics and costs and things that need to fit into place which are outside of our remit of knowledge. Paris was, I think, a really good place to start. There's only so much you can do from Paris, though. I thought it was a great idea to have the opening stage in the Champs-Élysées because, like, you've got the guaranteed eyes there watching the men's race. You have the women's race as well. Then it goes from there. But there is only so much you can do in a canvas of one week from Paris, but then men's Tour de France. No, the sorry, men's Paris Nice managed to go from Paris down to the south coast in a week. You would imagine they could. It was Paris. like Evely, you know, like some little shitty suburb, seven yeah. your Orge. Oh, sorry to the inhabitants there. I've been there. It's 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 mid, but like <laughs> it's I'm like, so sure we have lots of French listeners. <laughs> Well, I remember about that shit on someone else. Like, Clermont Ferrand is not like that. Wow, the city is like the Sheffield of France. Oh, God. Uh, wow. <laughs> Why are you being rude to Sheffield? I'm sorry. She- you're being- Sheffield's a bit. <laughs> no, I would say Sheffield. I would say Clermont is like an old industrial city, like near the hills that kind of gets forgotten about that there's like no real attraction to go to. Oh, that sounds like Sheffield. That exactly. Like, yeah. the, the parallels. I'm gonna go yeah. to there and just say, you know, you guys remind me of Sheffield. <laughs> I mean, this aside, uh, I mean Ewan makes a good point that if you just had it like the e-bike kind of thing and it's just touched on, they are essentially competing for the viewer. So like if you have them on at the same time, you want the viewer to basically watch six eight hours worth of cycling and that's a bit much and also like with the women's classics as well they happen like really early so like for them like liege will start at like like the flag drop in liege will be like 8 a.m and it'll finish at about 1 p.m and if you do that for like grand tour stages the men's grand tour stage will start at like midday maybe 1 p.m local time maybe more like 12 yeah 12 1 p.m uh, the women's stage would have to probably start at like 7 a.m so they can get it all done get it all on tv i think that's just a bit too much also closing the roads is very difficult having having a road closure for a whole day sometimes the, these races go on quite busy roads having it closed for all that time is quite hard usually for like these major bike races Apart from maybe the start and the finish, the road will close for maybe two hours. Having it so that it closes for a prolonged amount of time does make it very, very difficult. I think they have a luxury with these women's classics that are in like Belgium and so forth that they can have the roads closed all day. I mean, someone said in the comments that we should be the UCI presidents. I mean, we would take the challenge. 
Uh, it seems like the qualification isn't that high. But uh, nevertheless... Well, okay, in that case, <laughs> women's Giro. I know it's bad having it in the first week of the Tour de France, but have it the week before the Tour de France. Of yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's what it. everyone said. Yeah, everyone said move it to the week where everyone's absolutely gurning for racing. 